Hi, this video is going to be about population genetics and today I prepared two multiple choice questions for you and I recommend you to stop video here, read uh, both questions, try to answer each of them and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So here is the first question. If the frequency of the two alleles in uh, gene pool is 90% uh, for the dominant allele A and 10% for the recessive allele A. What is the frequency of the individuals in the population with genotype that is heterozygous? And in order to solve this problem, you have to know Hardy-Weinberg formula. And here is a formula. So uh, P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals to 1 and all this is uh, three frequencies of the two uh, possible uh, allele so three possible uh, frequencies of the two alleles so uh, one allele p and another one is q and both uh, these alleles combined uh, the frequency would equal to 1. So this is maximum frequency. And uh, 1 equal to 100%. So there can be different scales. One scale can be between 0 and 1. Another scale can be between 0 and 100%. So uh, 1 on this scale would equal to 100%. So um, as you see, for the P squared in this formula stands homozygous dominant genotype. For the 2PQ stands heterozygous genotype. And for the Q squared stands uh, homozygous recessive genotype. So P stands for the dominant allele and Q stands for the frequency of the uh, recessive allele A. So um, now uh, we know that the frequency of the dominant allele A is 90%. So here is, a, in this gene pool, here is a uh, dominant allele A. And we know that this uh, makes 90%. And recessive allele A, that is small allele A, would make the rest 10%. So this makes the rest 10%. So how to find frequency of this uh, genotype here? This is stands for the heterozygous genotype and this is very easy. So uh, first of all we have to find numbers on the scale between 0 and 1 and we are given frequencies in percentages and our answers here given on the scale between 0 and 1 so uh, what should we do in order to uh, mm, transfer these numbers on the scale between 0 and 1 we just have to divide them by 100 so here if we divide uh, 90% by 100, uh, we are going to get 0 0.9. This is going to be frequency of the dominant allele A. And uh, here, 10% would equal to 0 0.1 on the scale that is here. So we just transfer from this scale to this scale. And now we can put these frequencies here, so P would be 0 0.9 and Q would be 0 0.1. So if we add these frequencies, we are going to get 1. Now it would be very easy to solve this problem, because when we know frequency of P and frequency of uh, Q, or frequency of the dominant allele A, and uh, recessive allele small a it's very easy to find uh, the frequency 
of the heterozygous genotype. So the frequency of the heterozygous genotype would be uh, 2pq and that means that we have to multiply 2 by uh, frequency of the dominant allele A and by frequency of the recessive allele uh, A, small a. And the answer here would be uh, 0 0.18. And we have such answer. This is answer C. So this is would be a solution of our uh, first problem. So this is going to be our answer. Now let's move to the second problem. In a population of 100 individuals where there are uh, 100 dominant genes uh, A and 100 uh, recessive genes, or we can call uh, this as alleles, because uh, any gene uh, present in two uh, copies uh, that is different, uh, the difference uh, can be even in one nucleotide, we call them alleles. So, uh, if the three genotypes are selectively neutral, what would you expect the heterozygosity to be after uh, 10,000 generations? So, we have uh, dominant allele A, we have recessive allele A, and these two uh, alleles in diploid organism can produce three different uh, genotypes. One would be homozygous dominant, another one would be heterozygous, and the last one would be homozygous recessive. So the question is, uh, after 10,000 generations, uh, what uh, the expected heterozygosity would be in such a population? And here are the three answers. Answer A, 0. Answer B, 1. And answer C is 0 0.5. And probably uh, you may think that uh, heterozygous genotype uh, would be some kind of intermediate between these two. So you probably expect this one to be one sort, and this one sort, and this also one sort, or um, 0 0.5 would be the closest number to one sort, or 0 0.33, but actually uh, the correct answer would be A. Uh, the expected heterozygosity after uh, 10,000 generations for the uh, heterozygous genotype would be zero. Why this might happen? And here is a simple explanation. Imagine that, for example, we have only three individuals uh, whose uh, genotype is uh, heterozygous. So this is going to be first individual. Here is it going to be second. And here is it going to be third. So what is the probability that they would produce gametes that uh, all of them would be A? Uh, if we uh, consider that uh, each of them would be able to produce only one uh, gamete. And, uh, of course, here would be one half chances that this gamete would be, for example, small a. Uh, this, individual's, uh, this individual also would have one half chances to produce small allele a. And the third one also would have one half chances to produce small allele A. So in order to find uh, the probability for uh, all them to produce uh, only one kind of gamut, we have to multiply all these uh, individual chances and the answer would be that the probability uh, for three individuals to produce only one kind of gametes would be one eighth. And uh, but also exist probability for uh, three these individuals produce uh, only 
one kind of gamut that is uh, dominant. And the chances would be the same, one half, one half, and then one half. And if we multiply these chances, uh, once again, the answer would be one eighth. So we have to add this number, numbers, and we are going to get two over eight, or uh, chances would be one fourth or 0 0.25 or 25 percent. So this is uh, a rather large uh, probability that uh, with three individuals they would have 25 percent chances to produce um, gametes of the only one kind, whether it can be dominant allele or it can be recessive allele. And this would lead to fixation. So, if uh, we would have uh, only gametes with uh, allele that is recessive allele A, we are going to lose uh, this dominant allele. And if we have uh, this uh, chance that is uh, 1 eighth to uh, get dominant allele A, we are going to lose uh, recessive allele A. So, we have on overall 0 0.25 or 25 percent chances uh, of the fixation of one allele. So uh, we are going to lose this genotype uh, here completely and we would have 25 percent to get uh, uh, whether homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant genotype. So this is in a small community, of course, as you see with three individuals, uh, the chances is very large. 25% can be considered less, uh, large chances. And, uh, of course, if we have uh, our community that is uh, much larger, uh, we can expect that this might happen not in two, three, or five generations, but may take longer. But still, after 10,000 generations, uh, we expect uh, that uh, there are going to be fixation of one of the alleles, uh, even if there are no um, selection against any of them. So even if the selection coefficient would be the same for both of them just due to random process of the uh, selection. And as you see in our problem, we given a community of the 100 individuals, and this is considered to be a very small community. So we expect that after uh, 10,000 uh, generations, this community would be fixed for only one um, kind of uh, allele, whether it's going to be recessive allele, so uh, this can be homozygous recessive, or another variant that has equal chances uh, would be dominant allele A, so we would have only uh, homozygous dominant uh, genotype left. And this is why we choose answer A, that uh, we expect that a heterozygous genotype would be zero. So this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. See you next video. Goodbye.